This is Twit. You guys have come a long way from the OnePlus One, uh, actually. In fact, you recently came even further because you released the OnePlus 5T. I actually have it here, and I've been playing around with it for a little while now. Here it Look is. at that wallpaper. Uh, don't, don't, wow. Don't, don't. Can you guys, can you talk a little bit about that wallpaper just really quick? I just <laughs> want to know the inspo for it. That's yeah, nice... we, we actually have an individual that's been doing our wallpapers. Oh. Um, he's a gentleman, a Swiss gentleman that lives in Go India. Oh. Um, so it's kind of like a personal relationship and um, he does our wallpapers for us. So This nice. looks like a colorful party in Goa. <laughs> I find it to be very inspired by the raves of Goa. Oh, wow. So, uh, yeah, but I mean, most of our users are pretty... They, they they enjoy them so yeah. it's it is really pretty it's nice and different um from the and it, but it's also slightly similar i just think it's very interesting the design language of just something as simple as the wallpaper like what you decide to put as the default it's a heavily debated topic it, oh, i'm <laughs> sure <laughs> Oh, sure? it, it's 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 such a it speaks such volumes in terms of the identity of the phone. Yeah. I mean, like that that was the one thing I noticed when, at the essential first look when the first essential phone came out with that red kind of design. It's like oh, and just even looking at the one when I saw the OnePlus Five T, Flo, I was with you. I noticed that wallpaper. Like oh, that's not the regular wallpaper we see all the time. This is something different. I need to take notice. It's such a subtle suggestion, but but it's a, a good tool. So. And every user ends up seeing it. So it's a great way to kind of build a characteristic, build kind of a signature yeah. around a phone. Um, so I, I guess, Mike, well, first of all, I, I suppose we should talk a little bit about the 5T sure. um, specifically and why, because I've noticed you you, do, you guys have done this a, a couple of times now. You had the 3 and then you had the 3T. You got the 5 and you got the 5T. Yep. Um, on one hand, the the upgrades from the 5 to the 5T are significant enough that you could consider it to be the next version of the flagship. But the way you structure the naming convention of it makes it sound like it's an in incremental change. Why do, you, why do you go that approach? Yeah, I mean, I think the naming thing, we probably don't put too much into it. Um, got you know, it. The backstory on that is, you know, we... Gave a different name, the the 3T, uh, and we're OnePlus, so we just added one to S because some people call it an S, you know. So it took about five minutes at, yeah, at right. my desk. So we, not too much time was put into that. But I actually um, kind of love that. I, I love yeah, it's, that it's, it's the the answer it's is really. I don't know. We just decided to. It's kind of our DNA. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think so. I think for us, obviously, um, you know, I think we probably the 5T uh, we announced it last week and actually went on sale today. OnePlus.net. Yep. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we probably think of it as uh, not necessarily a radically different device than the five. Probably think of them as similar devices. And for us, probably continuous improvement is the theme. It was the theme for us last year. We actually didn't plan to make the five T at the, at the start of the year. Hmm. Um, it kind of came down to, you know, when we launched the five, we were very happy with it. Um, you know, there were some pieces of user feedback that we took into account. And um, also, you know, I think when this year started, um, the role of screens and the level of immersiveness was still something that I think the category was figuring out. Um, you know, we got user feedback this year that immersive screens were something that uh, people were interested in. Um, and so we kind of took that into account. And also, I think at the start of the year, we weren't necessarily comfortable with the quality or quantity of screens that were out there to deliver the display performance we wanted. So I think um, through the course of the year, we looked at it and we decided to make this change. Um, we're a small company, but, um, you know, we make one single device. So it allows us to move pretty quickly if we want to do a change like that. So Will this be across all spectrum of devices or are you guys going to continue to practice this sort of like... I mean, I feel like that's kind of the game, well, not the game, but the uh, the way things have panned out for a lot of um, manufacturers. Like they'll do the big flagship in the for you guys is the summer, and then mm. the the sort of the premium add-on phone. Yeah, I mean, I think we're we're a little bit of a simple company where I think our focus is kind of on product, not necessarily a, a business plan or a distribution plan or necessarily a uh, we have maybe not that far along yet. Um, I think for us, it's just uh, we can move somewhat quickly. A half a year later, we decided to make some tweaks. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that was kind of the thought behind it. Um, so what about um, some of the users you might be asking, like, well, if you guys are just going to beef up a phone, like, four months later or whatever, I'm just roughly counting, like, well, then why should I hold out for the first release? Sure. Why don't I just wait out for the winter when the sure. next yeah. one so, comes? So you I think, play that game forever. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I, 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 was, I, was, I, was, I was watching a thread where that comment was, I'll wait for the six, I'll wait for the seven, yeah. I'll wait for yeah. the 99, yeah. or the 100, you know, so. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I think I think what I'd say is I feel confident that if we make a device, it's going to be good. You know, we saw yeah. a lot of people use the three, use the 3T, and I think we think those are great devices, you know, and people make different decisions of when they want to, you know, get a new device. And so mm -hmm. I think and we have a lot of users tell us that they don't want us to necessarily um, wait for us, to, you know, wait for a whole year for us to introduce new technology. So I think those, those are some things that we kind of thought about. And what about, uh, what about the people who 
Darn it, I completely lost track of what about the people that What about the people that, <laughs> that want to give you guys. all of their money that for the rest of their lives? That want to give you their all lives. their money for the rest of their lives. One what are you going to uh, do about those yeah. people? I mean, one plus dot net. <laughs> Uh, I had a good question today. on the tip of so. my brain there too, and it just this is what happens after thirty, folks. It's okay. Hey, you know what? It's live. That that ha- <laughs> exactly. that's what happens in live. Um, yeah. Now, in my experience with the phone, um, I have set up the new face unlock feature. Of course, this is. Oh. I want to say it's all the new rage, but it's kind of not all the new rage. Not in the Android this, land. Yeah, Google did this a, a long time ago, but I feel like the technology around that has improved. Obviously, the iPhone 10, they included a bunch of extra sensors in order to improve the security yep. around this, make it harder to spoof. Yep. Uh, the old Google version was very easy to spoof. You just mm-hmm. put up a photo and it would trick it. But this face unlock, you can't do that. I had a really great selfie of me, you guys, and I, it was right. an awesome selfie. And I tried to trick it and it wouldn't work. Why? How, why what's going on there? Yeah, I mean, tri- and I think the thing for us it. is the, well, the reason we added this in the first place was obviously one of the form factor changes was we have a fingerprint sensor on the back now. Um, so we made the change to go to the larger screen. Um, and that was, we thought about this a lot. And I think the placement of the fingerprint sensor and the performance of it is what our kind of users expect from us. So we see kind of this face unlock feature as an incremental feature for convenience to unlock the device. Um, mm-hmm. Basically uses the camera, has 100 identifiers on the face um, based on spacing. Um, and so that's kind of our approach is about kind of like speed and user inconvenience. Yeah. Um, we've definitely tested it for th- themes, but um, it's more about convenience than necessarily security, probably. Yeah, it's really fast, I have to say. I mean, I think uh, Every it's, time I'm about to put my finger on the thing, it just kind of... Unlocks. Nope, sorry, buddy. I already <laughs> saw you. Don't worry. I got you. <laughs> You're 0.04, in. 0.04 seconds. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I think in, in the last week when we showed it to people at, at our launch event last week, I think people have been uh, impressed, surprised with the performance. But yeah. that's really great, though, because there are other bigger manufacturers out there that have not really been as successful in their, in their, I mean, I just think it's great to hear like a small start, like you guys are a relatively small startup and kind of like have this tech. I mean, why, but why put so much like prowess in this particular feature and not like, I don't know, some other element of the phone? I mean, I think for us, it's, it's just part of kind of an overall theme of kind of usability. Yeah. you know, and kind of convenience. And I think the f- original fingerprint sensor was about that too, right? Mm-hmm. Speed, access to your device, mm-hmm. convenience. So I think it's kind of consistent with that. And that's that's an important theme for us, I think. Yeah. I mean, the changes that you've made really clean up the device. Obviously, moving it to the back makes the display more of a feature. I'm always really uh, interested in... OnePlus's continuous uh, dedication to the 1080p as opposed to yeah. ramping up the display, which I think is actually is is a really smart move. Because, I mean, to my eyes, like, and I feel like I have pretty critical eyes when it comes to displays, I'm willing to make that uh, make that sacrifice, if, if, for lack of a better word, uh, especially considering the fact that you guys are pricing it at $500 mm-hmm. instead of $1,000. And it just doesn't seem that mm-hmm. necessary to upgrade that. Yeah, and I think, you know, the screen performance and the people really positive about the five, right? Yeah. And I think there's a question about 1080p. And it's funny, when, we, when we've when we tested this device, we've actually showed it to people without telling them what it was and asked them to guess. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people have guessed it was a uh, maybe, you know, a, a different technology. But I think we feel very happy about the performance the response we've gotten very positive. And also for us, I think it's a, we've optimized it based on kind of the software as well. And also, you know, for us, it's the right representation of performance where if you maybe go up, there's a more of a battery drain. Um, right. And for yeah. us, and for us, it's kind of an overall theme of performance and what really matters. And so I yeah. think we factor all those things in. Right. I mean, your phones, the way I sort of like pitch them to maybe people who aren't as familiar with the Android world is, um, it's they're just really good value, like, or at least yeah. that's what I see to be the consistent is the idea of just offering like you know a display high quality, of, high quality value. a display that's not going to eat yeah. up your battery. Like, yeah, it looks pretty, but like, do you really need quad HD on you at all times, kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, I think for us, it's it's kind of about the overall uh, overall package itself, right? How everything works together. And I think that's an important theme for us. And I think also for probably a little bit of a different business model or as a small company, everything kind of goes into product. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, we sell directly to users in in the United States. Um, There's probably not a middleman, you know, so a lot of costs that go into channel aren't there. And so I think we try to, um, that's factors into the kind of the whole proposition for us. Yeah. 